there's three main boards that we use in Asana for our content creation. One of these is basically developing content ideas. You'll see here that I've got a number of columns on a board, pretty standard Kanban board, and they generally get assigned to particular people along the process, but this could be all just one person if you wanted to. We first start with raw content ideas, which is like, I have an idea just of a title of a video with nothing else. I can just plonk it in there and potentially pick that up someday. Development means, okay, we're actually, you know, we've got a few bullet points, we've got some notes on it, and the idea is being flushed out. So right now, we've just hired a writer to actually do this. I was previously doing it myself, or my social media manager was doing it, but we've now got a dedicated writer who's just basically developing ideas. They then get moved on to the next column, which is review. So our social media manager will review them. And if she, that's G, if she likes them, she'll then bump them into my column, which is final review. And if that idea basically passes my test of like, it's a good idea and it's well developed and it's ready for me to record, I'll then drop it into the, into the record column. Now the record stream column here is important because I batch content when I sit down and I do YouTube content for IT Genius anyway. There's plenty of spontaneous stuff that I do do, but I do try and batch my content when I'm recording for the channel because it means that I can just get through five or six in one go and that's a whole week of content for the channel, which is pretty easy. Or sometimes two weeks because they've got other sources of content like cutting up live streams and other ways to get that. They drop into recorded once they're there and then once they're recorded, they move on to the production board, which I'll show you in a moment. Along the way, there are actually automations that are set up. There's little rules here and they just basically set the assignee as you drop them into the different columns. If I drop this one into this one here, how to hire your first VA, it's assigned it to Peter. And if I drag it back into G, it's going to automatically assign it to G. Now you've got to be on a business plan for Asana for that. It's not cheap, unfortunately, it's a real bummer. But when you're doing this at scale and at volume, it does make a lot of sense to have those automations happening because you can even do some things like creating certain subtasks, which make it very, very valuable. So next up, we have the production board, and this is where it's basically handed over to editors. So if I was to create something on the fly and it didn't go through like an idea or content development process, I could record it and then just drop it straight onto this production board if I wanted to. But basically the production board is where we take it from raw content that's been recorded and we take it through edits and then approvals and then publishing. Basically, once something is dropped into the recorded column in the Asana list, so if I was to drop one of these into the recorded column and I'll create a new one and I'll call it test content. If I was to drop that into the recorded box, it, there's actually an automation that automatically adds it to the production project. So it automatically gets added to the production board, gets added to that first column on the production board, and then it creates a couple of subtasks. So the, the editing subtasks are there, the final approval task is there, and then the publishing task is there. And these are all used as it goes through the steps on the production board. So let me show you the production board. So we have on the production board here, where's our new test content, and we will assign that to an editor to work on it. So let's say if that's going to Trevor over here, I'll assign that to Trevor in his bucket. He'll get a little notification that it's been assigned to him. And again, there's different stages. There's a review with the social media manager. There's a review with the head of marketing. And then there's a final review. Eventually, it will go into my bucket for final review. And that will get assigned to me. Basically, I want to see anything that's going out to the channel before it does. But I don't necessarily want to be the person who's posting it. But by the time it gets to my final review, obviously it'll have a Google Drive link to the folder sitting in Google Drive where the content is. I'll show you how we structure those in a moment. But also it really needs to have all of the details ready for it to be published. So it should have a thumbnail, it should have a description, it should have a bunch of hashtags, and it should have an optimized title as well. And so these all appear when this is added to another project, which is we've got a couple of trackers which actually track the content. So I'll come back to those, but let's say this is gonna be a short form content. So I'll add it to the short form content. And that brings up a bunch of custom fields that we've set up here in Asana. So the content type, let's say it's short form, maybe it's a supercut. The title will go there, link to the folder with all the project files goes there. 
And then we've got all these date fields are like when we publish it on different channels. But effectively, once it gets here to the my final review, all I'm doing is I'm opening it up, I'm having a look at the title, and then the description should be there with you know hashtags and everything else. And I can go and review the actual content, watch the video and see if I like it. Any feedback that I wanna give, I usually just actually use my like Loom or Screencastify and I'll just watch the content and I'll provide feedback live. And then I give that to those guys, they can watch my feedback. It's like I'm doing a reaction video to my own content. That's the easiest way for me to give feedback rather than writing out at this time code of 20 seconds, change this. And at this time code of 30 seconds, change this. So let me show you a completed one, show you what that looks like. Here we go, Chrome policy, Google bookmarks. You can see this one is a three to 20 minutes. So it's a mid-sized video. The title, manage Chrome bookmarks for your company. We've got a folder here with all of the information and the file, We've got a video link. We've got the thumbnail that's been uploaded there. Doesn't look like it has a description, but it's got all the other pieces uh, have been added in there. While I'm here, I may as well show you what does the actual folder look like. So this is how we do our folders. I'll just go back to the top level here. Okay, so this is a bootcamp one. It's a little bit different to our usual ones because we've got a big long video and the team are cutting them up in a smaller pieces. I'll show you a more general one that we would be doing. So in each of these, you'll have a folder called raw, which will be all the raw stuff. And then you have a folder called versions. And usually versions would actually be up the top but the versions will just basically be version one, version two, version three, version four. As the editors are working through things, they're just uploading all of the versions there. And then anything else that they do, ideally they should have the thumbnail in there. It doesn't look like they've put it in there. They may not be saving it there these days anymore. They might just leave it in Asana. But usually I would wanna have all of the files used to bring it together, basically in one place inside Google Drive. Next, you can see the way we sort these is the date in reverse. So year, month, and then day. And that just keeps things nicely organized because we're publishing quite a bit of content. And even if it's something short form, like a reel, that's also gonna go into an individual one here. So coming back into Asana, um, again, we're just moving through the board. We're moving through the board here one by one by one. And then once I've approved it, I drag and drop it into the publishing queue. That's automatically going to assign it to Rena, who will upload it to YouTube or whatever other platform that one is going to. And then once that's complete, it gets moved into the complete column. Now, once you get to the point where you've got a lot of data and a lot of content, and we've like we put 500 videos on, on YouTube alone, uh, we've started building like a master list of content, which is basically like it's just in list format and it's effectively a database of content. And so each piece of content will have a status, whether it's been, you know, developing, recorded, edited, posted. So we get an idea of like where the where it's up to and then we categorize it, whether it's a reel, whether it's a supercut, whether it's something that's Pete, that Pete has created, whether the team have created it, um, you know, titles and all the other bits and pieces are in here as well. This is useful because it acts as a bit of a database if we wanna like search for content. Like if we were to use tags, we could use tags. If I wanna search for every video I've created about LastPass, I can search for the word LastPass. And it's just gonna help me, uh, I guess, categorize and find all of that content. And the last thing that we do is we have a board called the content calendar. And this is where we schedule all of the content. So the team can see what content is coming up, when it's due to be published on the channel or other platforms. And if they need to move stuff around, they can actually go ahead and move stuff around. So if I jump into here, 2080 rule, this looks like something that the team are working on. I'll go and find the actual parent task. So currently this is in production and Trevor is working on this, but you'll see here we've got all of the individual subtasks, one of which is called publish content. And a little trick for advanced users in Asana, you can add a subtask to a second project or you can add it back to a project. So what we've done is we've taken this kind of like master task, that's got all the editing stuff happening in it and all of the kind of like the back and forward of edits and and any uh, feedback uh, as that's being built out and uh, you know the thumbnails the descriptions the social media manager is building that out but then that subtask of published content that then automatically goes onto this content calendar project and then they have the ability of moving around the publishing sorry and so the social media manager can work on that now this is a pretty sophisticated system, obviously. And you know, we've got like, a, we've got a large team. There's I think six or seven people on the marketing team who are 
who are working on all of this is, is two editors full time and there's you know managers and we've got a dedicated writer now which is uh, which is excellent as well if you wanted to just start with the absolute basics on this you would just have two boards you have the creation board and you have the production board and that's pretty much all you need and then anything you produce you just pretty much chuck it straight up on your channels or you schedule it a couple of days in advance eventually you'll hopefully get to the stage where you're producing a lot of content and then you're just dropping it in here for the team and I've got a system where I don't really even need to spin up an Asana task if I create something impromptu. I'll just make sure it's in Google Drive and it's named correctly. And the team will either notice it and create their own task on the production board. Or they will sometimes, I'll just give them a little prompt and say, hey, I just recorded this video. It's in Google Drive. Could you spin up a task and then take it through the production process? And then the team will do that. Um, and then, you know, the, the dream is... One day I'll just be recording the content and I won't even have to review it. It'll just go up on the channel. I have had that in the past. We've refreshed our marketing team in the year. So we're, we're now kind of like rebuilding some of those policies and, and protocols. But one of the things that we created recently was some guidelines for what the actual content should be. So this YouTube content checklist effectively has everything that we're looking for a video before it goes up. So a little basics like ums and ahs being removed Am I centered? You know, is the crop is the crop centered? You know, a few tools that we use for making sure that titles are catchy. So we use something called Tube Buddy, and Tube Buddy helps us to rank our YouTube videos based on the YouTube algorithm and based on the competition that's out there and other people that have created similar videos. This document here is basically our checklist for the editors to go through and then for the social media managers to go through before something gets published. What I'll do now is I'll go to the production board. And I'll call this one my content production process. And I'll say, yeah, that's been recorded. Cool. Lord. And I'll say, this is a snippet from today's on track call. And that's, that's enough. Lord will know to go and find that now. That's basically all I did. I've done my job. Lord will go and find that and do this. If you're interested in our team setting this up for you, and building all of this out in Asana with all the automations, with all the setup, exactly how we do it, just reach out to the concierge team. They'll be very happy to do that for you and just say, I want my content board to look like what Pete has. And they'll literally just go and rip exactly what we've done and build out all the processes for you. So if you want that, hit us up and the team will be very happy to do that for you.